Okay, so let us proceed to what we refer to as the empirical rule or also referred to as the 68, 95, 99.7% uh, rule. Okay, now here, um, we may take our data coming from the population. So if that is the case, we will have to consider the population mean and the standard deviation or mu and uh, sigma. Okay, or if the sample or if the data values are taken from the sample, then we will make use of X bar for the sample mean and S for our standard deviation coming from the uh, sample data. Okay, now, however, we have to keep in mind that the distribution must be assumed to be normally distributed so that we can make use of the empirical rule. Because the moment your distribution is not normally distributed, then we could not make use of um, the empirical rule. Okay, so what is the purpose of the empirical rule? How do we make use of the empirical rule to make some uh, conclusions or interpretations of uh, the given distribution that you have? So here, in the normal curve, um, the mean is found at the center of the distribution. Okay, and uh, we say that 68% of the entire distribution, okay, um, would include or is found within one standard deviation. When you say within one standard deviation, meaning to say one standard deviation above the mean and one standard deviation below the mean. Okay, because if this is your mean, one standard deviation above the mean is this one. If this is the mean, one standard deviation below the mean is that we're going to the left. So that means to say, what we have there is approximately 68% of your distribution is found within this region. So let me um, indicate that. So meaning to say within this region, okay, uh, this one would be 68%. All right, since this is symmetric, the 68% will be divided into two equal parts. So that means to say, uh, we have 34% is found in this region. That is one standard deviation above the mean. Okay, and one standard deviation below the mean, that is also 34% uh, of your distribution. Okay, so that we will have the total there, which is equal to 68%. All right? Now, um, the next uh, part of the rule is that 95% of the distribution, okay, or the entire distribution is found within two standard deviations. That means to say two standard deviations above the mean or two standard deviations to the right of the mean, okay, and two standard deviations to the left of the mean, or two standard deviations below the mean would give us an approximate of 95% of your distribution is found within this region, okay? So if this is 95% ang total, and we already have 68% in this case, that means to say, 95 minus 68, okay, that will give me the remaining percentages in these two uh, regions. Okay, so um, let me have that. So, two, devi uh, two deviations to the right of the mean and two deviations to the left of the mean that will give me an approximate of 95% of your distribution is found within two standard deviations above uh, and below the mean. Okay, that means to say, if uh, this is 95%, all right, the 95% uh, percent will be divided into two equal parts. Okay, so we will have 95 divided by 2. That means to say uh, this region that we have here, two standard deviations above the mean, will be equivalent to 47.5%. But I already have 34%. So that means to say the 47.5% minus the 34% uh, that I have will give me the remaining part here will be equal to 35 point, uh, sorry, 13.5%. Same is true uh, with this region, which is two deviations above the mean. The total is 47.5, but you already have 34%. So that means to say this is equal to 13.5%. Okay. In the same manner, when we say three standard deviations above the mean, okay, so that means to say if this is your mean, three standard deviations above the mean, Okay, and three standard deviations below the mean, that is one, two, three standard deviations below the mean, approximately 99.7% of your distribution is found in this region. If that is 99.7% and we already have 95% covered here, ang remaining would be equal to 4.7%. So, see, 4.7% will be divided into two uh, so that uh, it will occupy these two regions that we have here. And that will be equal to 2.35%.
and this is also 2.35%. So that if we sum up everything here, that will be equal or approximately equal to 99.7%. Okay, now, however, all right, um, under the curve, okay, we assume that 100% of your distribution is found below this curve. That means to say, ang total dapat under the curve should be equal to 100%. But a uh, found within three standard deviations above and below the mean is just 99.7%. That means to say, we still have 0.3%, which is found in this region and also in this region. So, si 0.3% will be divided into two. That's because we have two regions uh, to the right and to the left of the mean. So, meaning to say this will be equivalent to 0.15% and this will also be equivalent to 0.15%. So, that if we're going to sum up all the percentages under the curve, that will be equal to uh, 100%. Okay? Now, Say, for example, all right, okay, our main concern will be the intervals that we see uh, along the horizontal. Okay, So what we have when we say one standard deviation above the mean, that is mu plus 1 times standard deviation. Kung two deviations, that is mu, uh, this is mu okay, plus 2 times sigma or 2 times standard deviation. The same is true when we say three standard deviations to the right of the mean, that is mu plus 3 um, times standard deviation. Okay, now let us consider um, our uh, example, All right? So that uh, we will uh, better understand the concept of the empirical rule. So say in our practice exercise, in preparation for a clearance sale at a women's apparel shop, 2,000 brochures were placed in readdressed re envelope, sealed and stamped. So this process took an average of 7 seconds per envelope with a standard deviation of 1.8 seconds. So we are assuming that this population of dimes is approximately bell-shaped. So we are asked to find the number of envelopes that took uh, within the following um, values given or the, the number of seconds um, to prepare the envelopes. So in our uh, given data, our population is 2,000 uh, brochures. Okay, and the standard deviation... Uh, sorry, our population is... That is our big N. So our big N is equal to 2,000. And our mean will be equal to, oh, it took them 7 seconds uh, per envelope, okay, uh, to process it. So that means to say our mean is 7 seconds and the standard deviation would be 1.8 uh, seconds, okay? So what will happen to the interval that we have here? What will actually not change are the percentages. Those are fixed. Okay, so um, basically, I don't memorize all of them. I simply just derive these percentages by the fact that uh, 68, 95, and 99.7% are found within one standard deviation uh, from the mean, and 95% within two standard deviations uh, from the mean, and 99.7% within three standard deviations from the mean. Okay, so again. Now, um, we will come up with... Um, the intervals uh, that we have here based on the values that we have for the population, the mean, and the standard deviation. So the mean, as what we've indicated, is found at the center of the distribution and that is equal to 7 seconds. Our standard deviation is uh, 1.8. Okay, So that means to say, um, one standard deviation above the mean, what we need to do is simply add an interval of 1.8. So 7 plus 1.8 will give me 8.8. In the same manner, um, another um, or two standard deviations from the mean, I'm simply going to add 1.8 to the previous uh, interval that we have here. So 8.8 plus 1.8 will give me that is equal to 10.6. Okay. In the same manner, 10.6 plus 1.8 will give me a 12.4. Okay. What about the values that we have uh, to the left? or one standard deviation below the mean. So that is, we will be subtracting um, an interval of 1.8 from the mean. So 7 minus 1.8, that will give me 5.2. So again, two deviations to the left of the mean. We are uh, going to subtract uh, 1.8 from uh, 5.2. Okay, what will we have? Uh, that is um, 5.2 minus 1.8 will give me, that is 3.2. Four. In the same manner, we need to subtract uh, another 1.8 uh, from 3.4. Uh, 
and we will get uh, that will give us 1.6 okay we will make use of these uh, intervals to answer what is required in uh, our example so we are asked okay uh, find the number of envelopes uh, that took them from 5.2 uh, seconds to 8.8 .8 seconds okay so from 5.2 to 8.8 .8 seconds the equivalent percent is 34 34 percent and 34 percent that will be equal to 68 percent so that means to say for letter a that will be 68 uh, percent of our population of 2000 we're not yet done that's because we are asked of um, the number of envelopes okay so in this case we are going to get the 68 percent of uh, 2000 and uh, what we will have is we multiply 2000 uh, times 0 0.68 or the equivalent in decimal that will give us 1360 envelopes okay where processed okay from 5.2 seconds to 8.8 .8 seconds okay i hope that's clear all right let's proceed with letter b okay with uh, letter b uh, we are looking for the number of envelopes that took them more than 10.6 seconds to prepare. So 10.6 is here. When I say more than, I'm going to get the percentage or the percent to the right of that. Okay, so I have 2.35 plus 0.15%. That would be a total of 2, okay, 2.5%. Multiply it with our population because we're asked of the actual number of envelopes. So um, in that case, that is 0 0.025 times 2,000. You change this into decimal. That will give you 50 envelopes are processed more than 10.6 uh, seconds. Okay? Uh, let's have the last um, item uh, for letter C. Uh, how many envelopes uh, were processed? Um, less than 5.2 seconds to prepare. So, see, 5.2 seconds is here. When we talk of less than 5.2 seconds, we will get the values to the left. So, that will give us, we will sum up the percentages to the left of 5.2 seconds. That is 13.5% uh, plus 2.35% uh, and 0.15%. That will be equal to 16%. So, mean to say, we will get 16% of 2,000 and uh, that will give us uh, equal to 320 envelopes. Okay? So, if you're asked of the actual number of um, a certain item or a certain category or a certain variable in your given distribution, do not forget the moment you have determined the corresponding percent for that particular interval, multiply it with the population. Okay, so our population here is 2,000. However, if you're simply asked uh, to give the percent or the proportion, then you simply have to indicate the percent. You don't have to multiply it to the population if you are not asked of the actual uh, number of um, that certain variable. Okay, so I hope the concept of the empirical rule uh, is clear to you.